What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. What is going on? It's Jay Campbell, and today is my first podcast for my new brand, jccampbell.com, Spiritual Biohacker. And what a better person to have on my show today for the inaugural version than Wade Lightheart. Wade, what is up, my brother? Dude, it's so great to be here. Thank you for having. I love the moniker Spiritual Biohacker. I think that's phenomenal, and I am excited to be here. Dude, that's so awesome that you like that. Yeah, like as you and I were talking off air, we spent a little bit of time with my agency and some other people like coming up with a moniker. So, dude, you are a guy who's traveled all around the world. You've done so many things. I mean, when I was looking at your bio, I was like, this is the guy that I want to have on my show. Um, I'm just going to just briefly rip through your bio, but I mean, sure. dude, you've done so much. Okay, so few alive have traveled further or crusaded harder on behalf of helping people transform their digestive health wellness and overall lives than wade has right he competed in the mr universe after his health was failing which you can get to and talk about in your in a minute following a competition victory he began to search for answers in the process he learned so much about what makes digestion work along with other principles that form what he calls the awesome health system he is a three-time canadian all-natural bodybuilding champion who competed as a vegetarian, which is amazing, former Mr. Universe competitor and host of the Awesome Health Podcast. And he's offered, authored excuse me, numerous books on health, nutrition, and exercise, which are sold in over 80 countries and also serves as an advisor to the American Anti-Cancer Institute and is the co-founder and director of education at BioOptimizers, a digestive health company. Amazing, as I always do, how did Wade Lightheart get to speaking with Jay on the inaugural Spiritual Biohacker Podcast? <laughs> Great question. Well, uh, it's, uh, I'll try to be concise. Grew up as a kid in the rural parts of Canada playing hockey and all this stuff. Nothing really special. Till checking was dudes, though. You were checking guys. You know you yeah. are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love that. Fift, 50, at 15, I had three life transformational things that happened. Number one, my parents moved to an ex, from a rural place to an extremely rural place, five miles to my nearest neighbor. Wow. The telephone poles ended up my door on the dirt road, and I'd oftentimes have to take a snowmobile to get out to the bus to take an hour drive to school. Wow. Okay. So bottom line was very rural. Took me out of my peer group, took me out of my social group, took me out of my hockey career in a lot of ways. And then so I'm stuck in this place with a lot of time on my hands as a 15-year-old boy. Wasn't happy about it. It was a beautiful place to go stay, but not when my parents were the, the uh, caretakers of a resort. So uh, that was thing one. Second thing happened at this almost simultaneously. My sister, who was four years my senior, was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease, which is cancer of the lymph nodes. Right. I watched her go through the medical model over four years before she died at the age of 22. So, so horrible. I'm sorry, bro. I got into, that. yeah, it was, it was tough. But the upside of it, as tragic it was, is I learned that your health isn't a guarantee. I learned that... Uh, your life isn't a guarantee. Right. And that had a really powerful impact. Me. I, I started, you know, and, and, I'll, and I'll segue how that went. And then she also had given me at the, around the same time, she gave me a magazine that had Troy Zuclato on the cover, who had just won the Mr. California contest sure. with two pretty girls on, on the muscle and fitness calendar and, and driven mad with testosterone as every 15 year old boy. I was like, maybe I can get these girls if I have these muscles. Right. And so I bought into the Joe Eater lie and started. <laughs> the Joe Weeder lie, which yeah. is still going, I may still going. add. <laughs> still going. So bottom line, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger became my new mentor. He, and, and if Arnold said it or did it, I was into it. Of course. Uh, because he, he had a message that was really strong. He said, look, you can achieve anything if you have a positive attitude, self-discipline, and right. hard work. I Absolutely. had got the hard work story from my family. I never got the other two. And for him, that was it. I built yeah. a gym in my garage, started training, went to exercise physiology at, at university thought that was a collection of information, but wasn't integrated. So after that, I started studying under a variety of mentors. 
uh, including Scott Abel, who became my uh, professional bodybuilding coach. He's one of the best coaches in the Scott and I know each other very well. Oh yeah. Super smart guy. Yep. Very controversial because he doesn't uh, he doesn't pump anybody. He's like tires. me, dude. He doesn't have a filter. I love him. Yeah. Yes, and he really transformed my career. Um, got me to the Mister Universe contest. Um, prior to that, I you know I guess there was an interruption. I went to the '98 Nationals and realized it was a drug cult. You know, and we had gone from Dorian Yates and and to. Ronnie Coleman at that time. I said, well, you know, it really doesn't matter how much drugs I take. Right. I'm, I'm not going to be Ronnie Coleman. He's right. a freak, you know, and so, so I realized, so when I left that, I got into, opened my own store in Vancouver, had a distribution business, did a personal training business. And from there, uh, got into partying for a little bit, kind of came out of that and had a spiritual transformation. Sure, sure. Um, basically, uh, I had a, a pretty profound experience with a Paramahansa Yogananda, who wrote a book called Autobiography of a Yogi. Yeah, of course. Four years before, and then had a transformational experience. Started meditating. And uh, literally, at, at, at about six months later, I'd read another book called The Holy Science. And that book um, said, yeah, you got it. So, the, so I read a book. 983 Holy books over there like this. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, Yogananda's spiritual teacher was a guy by the name of Sri Yogananda. We wrote this book, The Holy Science, and talked sure. about... Uh, diets for 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 humans to experiment to advance meditation so i, I tried it as a plant-based diet yep i went i said i was of course i had the terror am i gonna lose all my muscle am i gonna lose all this right you're gonna shrink bro yeah so i went through two weeks i was like okay i'm okay i went two more weeks i was like okay <laughs> i went another month so it was two months i said i guess i'm done <laughs> And I haven't eaten meat since, so that's it. Like, there's, so there's no, I'm not a vegan vigilante or anything. <laughs> it's just, you know what I mean? It's like, vigilante. I know. I, I mean, know. you're not going to threaten to kill me because I'm not a vegan, bro. I know. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> protesting in the streets and all that stuff. I just think I, I believe people should choose the diet that's right for them, of their course. lifestyle, and their genetics, of and their genetics. But um, yeah, I went on that, and then I was like, people like, well, you can't bodybuild on that diet. I'm like, what do you mean I can't? And what happened is my spiritual teacher. I read an article from him, and he said if something doesn't exist and it's right, it'll, you, it'll be created for you. Right. And I'm like, all right, well, let's put this to the test. Right. I'm going to compete in bodybuilding with no drugs as a vegetarian. And if this is good, I'm going to make it to the Mr. Universe contest. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, so I don't butcher this. A vegetarian does eat some form of protein. Is that correct? Yeah, you eat protein. Exactly. Okay, keep, keep going. Yeah. Just keep your story going. So... I went down that road. Now I was applying a meeting mentality, but long story short, I won the Western Canadians, won the national championships and went to the Mr. Universe, placed 13th the first time. And, uh, but I had a major health crisis after. So basically I was in a contest diet condition for about six months. So you shut down your thyroid probably? Everything crashed. Yeah. I gained 42 pounds of fat and water in 11 weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, went from Mr. Universe to Mr. Marshmallow. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I, I met a doctor uh, who was an amazing guy. He was in his 70s. He had this vibrant energy. He was clear skin, looked right through. And I said, dude, I figured this guy could kick my butt. I said, what am I doing wrong? I got the best coach. I got Spartan discipline. I got training. I'm following everything you're supposed to do. He's like, dude, you have learned to build the body from the outside in. You yeah. haven't learned to build the body from the Who is this doctor? Dr. Michael O'Brien. And so I went on a regimen uh, the, under his guidance. I went on a raw food diet. I took massive amounts of enzymes and probiotics and yeah. uh, green foods and uh, minerals and all these different things. And I completely rebuild myself so much that in six months I had regained my conditioning. Plus, I felt amazing. Before yeah. I was tired. I had joint pains. I was sure. never. Now I was sleeping less. I had more energy. My skin looked great. I was totally vibrant. It was great. And, I, and over the next four years, um, Matt and I had started a company. Uh, in the bodybuilding world, helping bodybuilders get bigger and stronger, we called Freaky Big Naturally. And what happened is after four years, I decided I'm going to make a splash using all these principles. We coached 15,000 people during that time. And uh, I went back in, recaptured two more national titles, went to the world championships, placed fifth. That was as good as I was ever going to get. How old were you at this point? Sense. So that would be in 2007. So I'd be 35 years old. That was four years after my uh, 2003 episode and uh, felt great. Didn't have the crash, didn't have the rebound. And at that point, that's when I started teaching the world about some of the principles that I discovered and had enough data that I felt confident about the principles. And that's where the formation of the awesome health 
principles came out. We branded our company about five years ago as a digestive health company because we realized um, there is this emerging and frightening trend with digestive health related issues. 12% of hospitals right now in the emergency hospitals are gastrointestinal related illnesses. 25% of the population's on prescription medication for, for digestive issues. And a third of the people in America today are experiencing some form of digestive stress. And yeah. I understand why that is. And we created a solution to help people with that, to help people optimize their biology. Awesome. So we got a lot of bullet points, but since you're on the first spiritual biohacking podcast, we can leave the physical optimization stuff behind. No, we will. I will stay there a little bit because as you know, better than anyone, you cannot be spiritually optimized if you also are not physically optimized. And a lot of people will attack you and me for saying that, right? But mm -hmm. as I've read and, and I've continued to learn and, and, and apply concepts and stuff like that, you know, the truth is, is just like the Greeks said, the Hellenistic culture a long time ago, a sound mind builds a sound body. Now, I like to say that, you know, through my spiritual awareness and awakenings too, that it's really the heart, right? It's the heart chakra being clear that allows us to have the balance of both. And that's where so many people mess up. But back to what you were just saying, because I'm a huge believer in maintaining metabolic flexibility and you cannot maintain metabolic flexibility if you have dysbiosis, if you have, you know, all the things that you just talked about, the rotting inflammatory stuff that's going on in your stomach. And as you and I both know, most people today who eat a quote unquote, you know, SAD, right? A sad diet, a standard Americanized diet are literally eating nothing but shit. Endocrine disrupting chemicals, GMO, you know, transmogrified food and additives. I mean, these things don't even, you can't even digest them. So the average person is eating this shit all day long, right? They get to 40, 35, man or woman, whatever. And as you said, all those things going on in the stomach, which leads to inflammation, right? And as we know, inflammation leads to disease. So that's kind of where we are as a society right now. If you do not take extreme proactive measures to eat clean, to eat organic, you know, whether you're vegetarian, vegan, or, you know, you're a carnivore, whatever, if you don't do all those things, dude, this modern day society that we live in today will literally, you basically are completely incarcerated. I mean, realistically, what, you know, what do you do? So just give me a summation of like, what do you recommend for people to clean up the microbiome? Yeah, there's three areas where people run into problems. And I'll, I'll give a quick rundown, quick sure. So the, the digestive process, I always say there's five stages I did digestion. The first is taste, touch, smell, and get experience with the food. And that starts to prepare. There's a salivary response in the yep. body. Your body starts to set up for food. Yep. When food goes into, the, into, the, into your mouth, it, how well you chew it determines speed of digestion and thoroughness of digestion. I like that. Then the food goes down the esophagus into the upper cardiac portion of the stomach. And this is where people run into the first real level of, ch of challenges. Right. What's supposed to happen is in the first 30 to 60 minutes, the enzymes present in the food are supposed to be begin breaking down the food. Hydrochloric acid doesn't come in yet. So what happens is if I'm a tiger and I'm hungry one morning, I get up and I'm going after a zebra, I'll knock down the zebra, I'll eat the entrails where the enzymes and probiotics are, are most dense, and then I eat the carcass. Right. If I'm a bear, I grab a salmon, I do the same thing, or a blueberry. If I'm a cow or a horse, I'm going to fit, pick, pick the most enzymatically rich sprouted foods or greenest grass like, that I can get so sure. I have the most life force. Right. Now, humans, we cook all our food or yeah. most of it or the we irradiate the it. The protein, right, exactly. Or we irradiate it uh, through, you know, like uh, hitting it with it or we pasteurize it. And so what happened when, you know, in the last 70 years, you have to realize and why we got to this place is that starvation and nutrient deficient related diseases were the number one leading cause of death in humans. Yeah. So we created monoculture farming, mass food production, and mad f mass food dispersion. We added dyes, we added preservatives, we yeah. added chemical agents, we cooked things, we packaged things, we, we, we sterilized things. And these all solved the calorie issue. Right. However, we created a problem is that we killed all the enzymes and exactly. we're supposed to get the enzymes with their food and we don't. And then what happens, we have a pancreas that's four and a half or three and a half times the size of any other species relative body weight because we have to produce all these enzymes and there's exactly. a metabolic cost. We actually have to break down our smooth muscle 
and our striated muscle to, cons- to, right. to digest the protein we're eating. It's, or the food food. it's crazy, right? So it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, beyond that, so that's stage number one. At 30 to 60, or stage two, 30 to 60 minutes in comes the hydrochloric acid. Now, hydrochloric acid has two main roles. The first one is to disinfect us from pathogens, bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Right. Those three guys and high HCLs will kill that. The thing is, and it also serves to change the pH. So some um, proteins and some uh, fats and, and, and some carbohydrates would need different pH levels to break down. And as that pH level changes, some enzymes become activated, some become deactivated. Now, if you don't have enzymes there, your body's going to produce them, but that's not going to be released to the intestinal tract, and that's not really the way digestion was supposed to work. But we've compromised that as we've made an adjustment as humans. It's a metabolic adjustment. Right. So the thing is, is Dr. Edward Howe pointed out literally 50 years, 60, 70 years ago, that the average person is making, at 40 years old, is making 30% of the enzymes that they had at birth, and they have about 30% of the hydrochloric acid they had at birth. And that's why people, they get into their 40s, and all of a sudden they're like, I can't eat what I used to right. do in 20. I can't drink what I used to do when I was 20, and I don't know why. It's because they don't have enough enzyme potential. And what he also illustrated in his book, Food Enzymes for Health and Longevity, is that the, the length of life is inversely related to the enzyme potential right. of the organism. So in other words, if you have more enzymes, you live longer. And that's why people who eat less is the one thing that we know right. allows people to live longer. Octogenarians, yep, exactly. Correct. So regardless of the diet, it's eat less. Right. So then the third thing that happens, so once that food is all mixed up and chimed and broken down and disinfected, it, it leaves the stomach and goes in the intestinal tract. Now your body release what's called bicarbonate buffers, fancy sure. name for alkaline minerals yeah. that buffers the acid. And if you don't buffer the acid, if you have low minerals, that's where you get dual. By the way, remember the bico- bi- bicarbonate buffer supplements that you and I were taking back in the yeah. day? Yeah, of course. We took Dude, everything. you're gonna have more energy. Straight awesome. up there with boron, right? <laughs> <laughs> you do remember what I'm talking about, Boron, right? It was Smilax. Fos- yeah, dude. No, the, no, it was called Fosfuel. Remember? Yeah, that's that's right. That's right. Fosfuel. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to throw you off, but when you said I that, love, it just I love, these, that. I love these stories. It's great. <laughs> I just rabbit hold on you. Sorry. So the food comes into the intestinal tract. At that stage, this is where the microbiome, which is a fancy name for bacteria, will start to bring down. Will start to convert what's the, where the food is into either energy units or building blocks. Now, your microbiome will have anywhere from 200 to 500 different strains of bacteria. And if you don't have these, you're dead. Now, the thing is, is 10% are good, 10% are bad, and 80% are opposites. I call it the good, the bad, and the ugly, if you remember that old Western. <laughs> right. The bottom line is um, almost everybody in today's world has – a less than optimal microbiome. Yeah. So if enzymes cut the grass, the bacteria mulch it so that you can actually utilize it. If you have food that does not get digested properly in any of those stages, it now becomes food for the bad guys, the yeah. bad bacteria that produces the indole, the skatol, all these things. That's why you wake up with brain fog in the morning, crust in your eyes, yeah. or low energy inside yeah. the body or inflammatory responses. So you got to get that thing. And then the final stage is peristaltic, peristaltic contraction gets the waste product out of the system of the body. And so what we did as a company is we identified the challenges that people have in each one of these areas. And we went off and solved them. I solved them for myself first, because that was the first, you know, you have an itch and scratch it. So I solved it for that. We solved it for our customers. And then based on their feedback, we just kept coming up with more solutions relative to the the symptoms that they were suffering from. And so I I think we probably solve digestion better than any company out there. And we have a whole suite of products and a a very deep education chronic because it's not enough just to randomly shotgun products. Of course. You gotta have the education. You can't supplement your way out of a bad diet. Um, But if you have a good diet with the right bacteria, then, you know, and the right products, then you can really optimize it and, you know, live long, live strong. Awesome. So what is the name of your supplement company so I can pump, pump, pump it out yeah. right now before we yeah. get down to David Hawkins? Yeah, Bioopt- bioptimizers.com. And for those who want to find more, we've got bioptimizers.com slash T-O-T 
And if you put in podcast 10, you can get a 10% discount. Plus we have a money back guarantee on every single product we sell. If you take any product, it doesn't work. We give you your money back. In fact, if you call our lines, they'll say, you know what? You took the wrong product. You, you probably should have took this one. We're going to send that to you for free and see if it fixes your digestion. And if that doesn't, you can still get your money back. So, we so just do you guys have cap, you guys have caps and powders, I, I presume. Yeah, all, all our products are through caps, although we are coming out with a leaky gut uh, product that will be powder in the new year. Awesome. There's so many people out there, as you know, suffering from autoimmune disease, but as you and I both know too, that it's just digestive issues, right? I mean, you, I mean, I, dude, I, I want to switch and get into consciousness, but you and I could talk so deep because I love that too. Um, it's obviously the number one impairment that causes really death, right? Because it leads to cellular death. You know, right. everything becomes cytotoxic eventually when you do not cure and clean up your, your bowel and your intestine and your, obviously, your microbiome, right. as you right. talked about. So anyway, let's say, because this is the spiritual side. So talk about your enlightenment. Talk about what really happened to you before we start getting into deeper conversations. Like, Because I like to find out, I think all of us, right, guys, especially like you and me, we're health and fitness bros, and something happens to us. We meet somebody, a mentor, or, you know, as you, you had a health crisis. Uh, and I have been, thankfully, I haven't been um, besieged with that, but I have had my dark nights of the soul. I attempted to kill myself. But we all, we all have, you know, come to Jesus moments, as I like to call them, dark nights of the yep. soul. What was yours that put you on the spiritual path? Well, I've had several. Okay. At different times for different reasons. So I'll give you the first one that was transformation. In 22, I had... Um, an overdose. And basically what happened was I, I was using a, a LSD and was cut with strychnine. Oh, Jesus. And yeah. And had a <laughs> more than a bad trip. I died in that trip. But in that moment, I met God. I, never, I haven't talked about this. So oh, please talk about it. This is so, the greatest thing ever. So I literally got in the presence of the light. And here is the beauty of that. We're talking about an infinite eternal, super loving, super powerful, super soft presence of just nothing but pure light in consciousness. Awesome. And in the, in the presence of that, it didn't judge me. I judged myself. Awesome. I went through the life review. I saw the impact that I had created in other people in a negative. I felt that I didn't see it. I felt their pain. And, I, and, so wait, and wait, this is when you were at 22, right? This is when I'm 22. Okay, so I right. felt the experience of self-loathing. Uh, and then I was transported into uh, levels of hell. And then from there, I would go into other lifetimes. So I would go into another lifetime, I'd come back to hell, I'd go to another lifetime, I'd come back to hell. And, and hell is a, it's not a physical place. It's like a, it's like a conscious place of, right. uh, th that, that is like all of the worst things you could possibly like kind of coming into your conscious and it right. almost has a burning sensation. And that's maybe that's why they come that and it's well illustrated in uh, Dante's Inferno. Which yeah, I was just going to say that. that and Dr. Hawkins does a great job of explaining it as well in his books. And I had never, but, but here I'm 22. I've yeah, never heard no of cool, right. no I've cool. never had this thing, you know, no. like, I, yeah, I'm just like, what's going on? So anyways, that kind of recalibrated my experience. And I, and I, I, I started to take what I would call a more spiritual progress from that point. so wait a minute i gotta go back to that because it's an amazing story so you're you're doing lsd were you just like with your buddies yeah i was actually i was actually with a girlfriend and a friend of mine who uh ended up being a world-renowned physicist for nasa we used to do these consciousness experiments <laughs> and he was he was part of the experiment so wait a minute this is before he became this famous person yeah yeah he, was, yeah he was uh, in college with me right <laughs> that's a super awesome. genius right that's so awesome okay so you were just doing it just a trip you know I, yeah. i've done microdose lsd i mean yeah. it's no big deal but um and, and you had this experience okay so you you saw heaven you saw hell you you, you were in the presence of an omni omnipotent presence which you interpret as god yeah. the light whatever what happened when you came back like what well, first happened felt, instantly when you came well, back? first off i was terrified that somehow because i died in that lifetime i had the experience of death went through the funeral the whole yeah. nine things and so when i got back to this reality i felt like a piano was going to fall on my head like i thought like uh oh right. time's up right and how long do you think it lasted like it, it that just lasted that lasted about it was really intense for two weeks and then it lasted probably another six weeks after and what what i would say is that 
I, I, I realized in my, this trip, cause I could tell you for two weeks, everything that happened, but it was like all possibilities exist in a three dimensional sphere. And yet we have been conditioned to follow one of these linear portions. Right, exactly. And it's like in that portion I died, but somehow I was able to jump into another right. possibility matrix and my life got to expand, but I got to retain the information from that other life. And that's We're definitely multi-dimensional beings, by the way, yeah. but we see yeah. things, as you said, we've been trained with the 3D prism. You know, it's like the Oculus of linear, everything is linear. And Correct. Such. Yeah, yes. we've all had these experiences, which your whole life changes suddenly. It's not part of the, the you know, the Newtonian paradigm of causalities. Right. Like everything right. changes. You meet, you meet somebody, you're, someone's in a car crash, you know, all, there's all kinds of different things that happen and all of a sudden everything changes suddenly yeah. and we go, there's no way to predict that. Yeah, yeah. So then, okay, so then... That lasted for a couple of weeks. So your life transformed, you would say, from that, or you had to you you went back oh, to yeah. being bro, fit bro, and no, it, you I, had to have no, something else happen. Well, well, then I started seeking out spiritual information because I had never had this past. Like I went through past lives and sure, everything, and, sure. and so I was like, I never heard of that. That was crazy stuff, <laughs> you know. And so I started reading about it and learning about it and began kind of an interest in those items. So what were the books like? The seminal books for you, the seminal works for you that really got you on this path. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'd say autobiography Yogi was the most sure. transformative for sure. me. That was that was sure. extremely powerful. Um, I, I think a lot of people, by the way, our age. By the way, you are the same age as me. You were born in seventy one or seventy. Seventy two. Seventy two. Oh shit! I'm older than you, bro. You're just All a right. kid, man. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. No, but I, truthfully, um, I was born in seventy one. But truthfully, it was a transformational book for a lot of people of our generation, and even older people. And I, you know, let's be honest, you and I to have this kind of spiritual awareness and awakening, we're still really a small contingent, right? Because the younger people today are way more hyper aware, but you go older than us, mm -hmm. you go into the baby boomers and you know this probably with your own parents, right? I mean, these people, I mean, again, no judgment, but I mean, we are blessed, bro. We were probably yeah. on the cutting edge of awareness and maybe we all incarnated in to be around this amazing time that we all probably foresee coming and we or we hope that is coming. But I, I do feel like we're, we're the edge. We're the bleeding edge, right? Like you're, yeah. if you're 50 um, or older, it's likely that you don't have the awareness that you and I have. And again, there's many, there's a ton of outliers. I know that. I know people in their 60s that are super, supremely awake, you know, huge disciples of, of Hawkins and stuff. But by and large, they're the exception rather than the rule. But your age, my age, and down, there's a lot more of us. Do you agree with that? It's, it would appear that there is a conscious revolution yes, that's revolution. happening and, yes. and we're, we're very fortunate about we that. We are, we are. Um, yeah, we are. so I, I, and other books I would say, Conversations with God, Bringers of the Dawn comes to mind. Uh -huh, Bringers uh, of the Dawn, Barbara Marcianic, that's yeah, amazing. Uh, it's over there. Yeah. Power of Now, Many Lives, Many Masters. Um, those kind of came in and then the super, I would say, the super accelerator was uh, Power Versus Force by Dr. Hawkins and then the subsequent series and lectures, which really unified all of the attempts that many religions or doctrines or practices into kind of one systematized, as he called, uh, devotional non-duality, right. which was devotion to the truth and, and, and with a methodology for determining the truth. And that, that just changed everything. Like after that point, the acceleration of my own spirituality uh, really, really came and, and I'm grateful for it. And, and thank you for asking me about that because I don't usually get these questions and I really appreciate that. Remember what I told you at the beginning of the show, there's only one me. And now I'm bringing out the best of the people like me, which are you. And there are many others of us, by the way. There are many people that are you know, very renowned who will not talk about this, but just let me get at him. I'm going to bring it out of everybody. I mean, honestly, brother, like, you know, this, I know this in 2020 and 2021, the world is going to transform in ways that most people cannot even comprehend. You just said it. We are on the precipice of a massive vibrational revolution. Human so. beings are literally going like this, right? Like, you know, as Hawkins would say, we had that 15% bump. I think he said it was in 1986. Well, I think that by 2021, we're going to have probably 40% at 400. I really believe that. I don't even, that's not even a belief. It's a knowing. Wow, so awesome. just, just, just going into what you're saying though, because I want to stay here, um, just the rest of your life, right? So just take me into your thirties and forties. How has spirituality slash consciousness 
just been all pervasive in how you live your life? Well, we've actually implemented it into the foundational aspects of virtually everything that I do. My relationships awesome, uh, inside our business, uh, we, we literally calibrate solutions and products and things like that, uh, as That's well awesome. as our company and energy and who we deal with and where they're at. Same so it's pretty, me, Same pretty, me. it's pretty profound. I, I, I mean, I can, it's to the point that I can't imagine what life was like if I didn't have the map of consciousness. I, I just, I right. think for people that don't, because they don't have so a way, they, they don't, everything is black and white. And what right. he right. offered was a rainbow of possibility with correlating perceptions and processes and emotions and also what keeps you hooked and what you know what's the attraction and what's the aversion so you can kind of help yourself navigate and so i I've, I've been able to do that i had a couple other profound experiences been very lucky that way um i had a i really embraced the hawkins stuff and that would be in 2006 2007 and had another life transformative experience i went into a state of bliss for an extended period of time totally my whole life melted down and i was happy to let it all go and it was great i was you know it's like from entropy comes creation you know so many people yeah. don't understand that to truly live a level 10 life and have that occurrence happen bro you know that you have to have a dark night of the soul or something similar in that you have to collapse like you literally do yeah. have to be on the void of like extinction as a physical linear dual being to move into non-devotional duality spirituality right like that's the only way it'll happen i've never seen anybody or known anybody in my you know short 49 years in this lifetime that hasn't had that same experience almost everyone who's made it right they've had those stories they attempted to kill themselves their business collapsed their business they bankrupted themselves five times their wife mm -hmm. stole all their money and kidnapped their kids i mean we all have these similar life experiences happen to us. It's not a coincidence. Yeah. And I think part of it is when um, you're turning your life over to God or divinity or, totally. you know, great totally. spirit, whatever you want to call it. What totally. happens is instead of living an ordinary life, your life can kind of take on what the world would say is a little bit tumultuous. Yeah. Uh, however, your inner self is happy because you start working through these things that a lot of people just get taken out of. Like there's so many people that go through a divorce and they're bitter. They, people that go through a financial wipeout and they don't have the courage to come back again or they want to blame somebody or they go through a major illness right. and you know, they're, they're hamstrung for the rest of their life or uh, they, they experience the death of a close person and they have no way to contextualize that. And that's where, if you have a spiritual practice and a doctrine and a, and, a, and a way to follow, what it does is it gives you perspective and it gives you context and it gives you a way out of the suffering. Now, I'm not saying you're going to avoid the pain. In fact, you're probably going to experience more pain, but you, you eliminate the suffering. And I always love what Eckhart Tolle said in The Power of Now, and that is, hey, pain is necessary until you realize it isn't. You can't exactly. change what happens in life but you can change how you represent it in life. And to me, that's everything in a spiritual practice. It's profoundly said. So I have a statement in my first, second and third book, The Gift is in the Shit. And that was before I really understood, you know, again, the, 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 the non-devotional duality, as you correctly put it from Hawkins. And now I realize that the gift is in the shit, right? So the gift of life is in the contrast, but it's me labeling it as shit, right? Like if I don't label it as anything but good or bad or anything, again, the whole non-duality aspect of, you know, physically creating a manifestation, it's not, it's just the gift of life is, you know, or the I am principle. It's like, you don't have to label it as good or bad. You know, the universe doesn't label anything as good or bad. The universe gives you what you focus on. Right. And that is the gift, you know, so it's like, you know, I, I wish I could go back and edit some of the books. I mean, there's no reason to, but it's just, it's interesting as we do spiritually evolve, uh, Wade, man, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, um, I'm humbled that you're on my show, but I have, obviously I had no idea that you were this advanced and it's amazing. And dude, there's no coincidence that you and I found each other because yeah. I already know, like after the show's over, I'm getting your cell phone number and I'm going to text you and I'm going to be like, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna like send you all these things and it's awesome. And 
I'm in, I'm in an amazing state right now because my wife just released her book yesterday. It's her first book. It's called Cracking the Fountain of Youth Code. It's amazing. My wife is literally my spiritual mentor. Uh, and she brought me back from the brink of the abyss almost eight years ago now. And she just released her her bundle of joy into the world. Dude, it is amazing. It's, called, it's, wow. it's, it's all about women's empowerment and spirituality. And she's like me, like you, not afraid to say it like it is. And again, also a very big student of Hawkins and has read all the books. And so I'm just like so elated. But it's not a coincidence that you and I are talking yeah. on this moment in time in this day. And that's what's so amazing about the universe, dude. And God, it's an honor, man. Just, you know, final thoughts from you, because I know you got to get going and we, we both have a busy day today, but final thoughts from you. Where are we going as a species and how excited are you about the future? And, you know, preface that with anything you want, because a lot of people can look at the world right now and say, holy shit, 5G's coming. Yep. You know, we're being decimated environmentally. Yep. So, you yep. know, it's not easy to take a side of positivity. I mean, you know, I'm all my social media now is manifesting the golden age, love, light, and consciousness. That's all I'm saying. So I am creating that reality because that's the reality that I'm creating. But I want your opinion of where we're going. Well, I'm going to cite a couple of things that I think is very powerful for those who are the scientifically oriented and those who are the spiritually scientismists. Oriented yeah. And, and, and where they meet. So uh, there's a couple of great books out there. Um, if you're on the science side or the social science side, and that is written by, uh, Yuval Noah Harari, and he wrote a book called Sapiens. It's amazing he wrote book. Another book. Homo Deus, I got it right there. Exactly. And so Homo Deus, what's interesting is, so you have to realize if you look at the history of this planet, and that is 99, over 99% of the species that have existed don't exist. Exactly. They, 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 they're done. Think about and that. There was five known competitive hominid, hominoid species that yep. gave rise to Homo spiritus. And, and, and if you're on the spiritual side, Dr. Hawkins talked about Homo erectus moved to Homo sapiens. And both of these guys are saying the same thing. They're saying that we're evolving to a new species. Yes. Call it Homo unitus, Homo spiritus, Homo digitalis. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to be called. But the reality is, is I believe that we are moving into a new world. And I do believe that technology is actually paving the way. So yeah. I think of yes. the internet yes. as actually an aspect. It's the nervous system of a new species, right. which is connecting everybody everywhere, just like all the cells in your body are connected through a nervous system. I think humanity is moving into this homo unitus, homo spiritus. Right, collective. Yeah. Now, the thing is about that, anytime that there is the emergence of the new species, and, and Charles Darwin is the most misquoted guy ever. He didn't say survival of the fittest. Right. He said survival of the most adaptable. Right. And humans have survived up to this point because we are the most adaptable. And what's happening with, you know, there's a lot of fear mongering and health terrorism and stuff that's coming out from these technologies. And it's up, what I do believe is that life Perm it finds ways to exist in the I was universe just gonna say itself. That life finds a way. Remember, from, what was that? Uh, Jurassic Park, you know, yeah. chaos theory, life finds a way. Yeah. yeah. And so what we, in science, we kind of say, well, these are the determinants of what creates life or allows life to throw it thirst. But we find contradictions to that in virtually everywhere we look. Of and course. so life is an essential component of the universe itself. It expresses itself in the vacuum of space on a little tiny piece of dirt with some water floating at some innocuous pace in the galaxy. Exactly. And here we are today. Like what could be more miraculous than that? Panspermia. <laughs> so I'm not so worried about the technological evolutions, the, court, the, the right. climate change and all these right. things that everybody's freaking out about. What I would right. say is the, the thing I, I, I concern people about is getting your indoctrine system, your nervous system and consciousness entrained right. to non life supporting energies by exactly. saying, Oh my God, it's the end of the world. Well, you know right. what, what you hold in mind tends to manifest exactly. and what's going to come out of these challenges. And I'm not discrediting the challenges. What I'm saying is what's going to come out of it is the people that can hold to a positive, higher value will not only survive, they'll thrive, right. they'll procreate and give rise to a new species. I right. do believe we are heading to a new species. I think it's over for Homo sapien. Right. And it's our job to evolve into this new, 
new level of awareness and that everything that we do in the world affects somebody else some, somewhere on the planet. So let's get our collective shit together right, <laughs> and, right. and, 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 and really embrace these principles because it gives meaning to life. You don't get meaning of your life out of a car, out of a house, out of a fat bank account. They're all nice and I certainly like them. They're wonderful, but the meaning <laughs> comes from what is life about? What am I supposed to do? And there's nothing that feels better than being kind and loving. And you know, I'll leave it with this. Dr. Hawkins said one thing that was really powerful. He said, look, you don't have to meditate. You don't have to move to the hills. You don't have to follow some dog run. You don't have to eat fish on Fridays or no meat all week long, or you don't have to, you know, you know, bless everything. Here's what you need to do. Be kind and loving to everyone, everything at all times, especially yourself, no matter what. Exactly. If you do that, you can really resolve every conflict that you have in your life. And we know how that supports our health, our vitality, and most of all, our spiritual evolution. Wow. And there's a reason that he was on the inaugural Spiritual Biohacker podcast. Wade, man, I have a profound love in my heart right now for you, dude. That was amazing. I'm so thankful that I brought you on here today. You, what, you, you had no idea that we were going to talk about this. You thought we were just going to talk about digestibility and sell your right. supplements, bro. Go down to money magic. But no, dude, that was amazing. I mean, honestly, I have such profound. You just gave insane wisdom. So, I mean, I have really nothing else to say other than that I, you know, massively support you. I appreciate you. One last plug uh, for your supplement company real quick. <clears throat> yeah. So if you go to uh, bioptimizers.com slash TOT, uh, you get a 10% discount on anything you order. Plus I've put out the 12 week awesome health course. It's a 12 week course. It's five to 15 minute videos. There's 84 of them. Nice. And we give that away as part of our what's called your dharma, your way to world, the things yep. that I've learned to be able to produce health and life. And we give that away to everybody if they're looking for, you know, to kind of solidified methodology in this crazy world that we live in. Amazing. Wade Lightheart, you are a spiritually advanced man and I am glad to know you. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And we will see all of you guys next week.